Hello, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Kennedy, and welcome back to another episode of Market Academy. Okay, now what we're going to be doing today is we're going to kind of pick up where we left off yesterday. If you recall, we were looking at basically um, uh, impulse waves. Again, this is what I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks here. We're going to go through and kind of dive a little bit deeper into these five core foundational patterns which make up the wave principle. So this week, of course, we're focusing on the very first wave pattern here. Again, this is an impulse wave. This is one of two types of motive wave structures. And one of the, th one of the things I found very, well, challenging when I first was learning the wave principle, and then again, this was probably 30 years ago, it was very easy to discern an Elliott wave pattern if I was looking at, say, for example, line diagrams. Very clear, very easy to identify. But a lot of times whenever I made the transition from line diagrams to an open high, low close price chart such as this, uh, initially it was very challenging because sometimes you'll look at a market and you'll, you can easily see the pattern. Uh, on some some occasions, you'll look at a price chart and you don't see any kind of Elliott wave pattern. The five wave structures that you think you might see simply don't follow the rules and guidelines of the wave principle, so you can't call it a, an impulse wave or a five wave structure. Well, let me just kind of put your mind at ease as far as that goes. Number one, it does take a little bit of practice, but number two, and this is probably more important, if you're looking at a price chart, looking at a market, and you don't see an Elliott wave pattern that you recognize, if you don't see anything discernible, just simply walk away. <laughs> I know, what a novel idea. Uh, just simply walk away and find another market, okay? Find another market where the wave patterns are clear. OK, uh, I felt like I and again, back in the old days that if I had a price chart that I had to label it from an Elliott wave perspective. Well, that may be true, say, from an analytical point of view, if you're doing market forecasting. But when it comes to trading, you have the option of only taking the best trade setups by only trading or focusing on the best Elliott wave patterns. And the best Elliott wave patterns, of course, are going to be those that actually adhere to the Elliott, to the rules and guidelines of the wave principle but more importantly, are easily discernible. Okay, so for example, Z Labs, iLab, ticker symbol ZLAB, going back to say April 2024, I think this is a very apparent, very textbook quality impulsive structure. Starting back here, one up, two down, three, pull back and wait four, and then up and five. Again, very, very textbook. Okay, I like that. And, and did I have to look at a lot of price charts to be able to find a textbook quality uh, impulsive structure? And the answer is yes, okay, because I didn't want to show you garbage. I just wanted to show you some really good examples of, hey, this is what uh, an idealized Elliott wave structure looks like on a price chart. And again, if you're looking at a market and you don't see anything easily recognizable, walk away, just simply go to another market, certainly if you're a trader, and look at something that you do easily recognize where the wave, where the wave patterns are not a challenge to identify. Okay, now let's move on and take a look at another price chart. Okay, this is a price chart of uh, United Therapeutics, okay, ticker symbol UTHR. And what I want you to do is back here in February, up into the high here, I want you to look at this from an Elliott wave perspective and identify it as an impulsive move. Where would you put the one? Where would you put the two? Where would you put the three and the four? Okay, well, welcome back. Okay, for me, it's kind of fairly easy. You know, I'm starting here, you know, the one up. A, B, C, this looks like a little flat correction. And then, of course, I would come in with the Kennedy channeling technique. Uh, it's been a while since we've uh, done any lessons on that. So at some point, I will come back and review uh, how I use this uh, trend line algorithm. So I have my one up, my two down. The break above the upper boundary line of the base channel uh, confirms the presence of third wave price action. Uh, so we can take that off. Uh, therefore, I now know I am indeed working on impulsive move. Uh, we get to a high here and kind of goes sideways. Uh, this looks like a running flat to me. And then we have the final push higher. Okay. So the way I would actually look at this initially 
That's just the way I've described it. One up, two down, three, running flat, four, up and five. Now, the reason we call it a running flat uh, is because wave C of the pattern did not terminate below the wave A extreme. And again, uh, whenever we get around to discussing flats that week, I'll get into a bit of a, say, greater detail. Now, one thing, too, I would like to advise you against is falling down the rabbit hole. OK, uh, when I was whenever I was putting these slides together for today's presentation, uh, I you know kind of quick hit it. OK, I didn't spend a lot of time with this. In other words, whenever I was looking at this wave one advance, uh, I didn't go down to an intraday price chart and make sure that we had like on a 60 minute time frame, you know, be able to count the one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I didn't get caught up. Uh, in this little consolidation. In other words, I, di I call it falling down the rabbit hole. Like Alice in Wonderland, a lot of times you can fall down the rabbit hole and that you you kind of get that into that mental state that, you know, analysis paralysis or paralysis analysis where you just, you don't know because you're looking at everything uh, on too small of scale. In other words, you lose sight of the forest through the trees. OK, so step back. Now, one trick that uh, I've kind of developed, and then again, this is nothing magic or brilliant by it. But a lot of times what you can do is simply apply uh, a five period simple moving average. That's all this is. It's a five period simple moving average. And a lot of times what it can happen when you do this is it brings out the substructure. It brings out the moves. It brings out the waves and it eliminates the noise. OK, because there's a lot of noise going on in the markets every day, you know, uh, swing high, swing lows, intraday price action. There's a lot of noise. So a lot of times what you can do to kind of lessen the noise is just put up a, you know, a simple five period moving average and you're looking at the advances. OK, you're looking at the ups and downs, the undulations of the price moves. OK, so I clearly see my one up and then a little down, up, down sequence, one, two. And then over here, you know, once we had our top, we came down, rallied in three waves, came back down. That's nice. And also, too, this gives you the ability to, if you wanted to, and again, not that I recommend it, but if you wanted to, you can actually get down into, the, say, the smaller substructure and begin to count or identify uh, the movement within that larger wave three advance. OK, now let's move on and take a look at another one. OK, now this is Toll Brothers. Now, this brings up a very important characteristic that I always like to remind everybody, because whenever we get around to zigzags, you'll notice that a 535 pattern is this number of sub waves that you see in a zigzag. Well, you also have a 535 in waves one, two and three. So a lot of times whenever you're working a zigzag, OK, ABC, well, an alternate wave count, if you look at the other side of the equation, instead of being A, B, C, this can actually be one, two, and three. Okay, so how can you differentiate or what would be, say, an early clue that you can look at that would aid you in identifying the difference? Well, one thing I would suggest is slope analysis. Whenever you're doing an A, B, and a C, more often than not, not always, but more often than not, wave C will have a more shallow slope than what you experience in the initial move up. But if this were to be a, a third wave price move, then the advance would be a little bit more decisive, very much like what we see here. So notice the slope of the initial move up. OK, now notice the slope of this subsequent rally, much more steep, much more sharp. OK, and then, of course, we put on our uh, base channel trend lines again to confirm the presence of third wave price action. You can clearly see that that occurred uh, pretty much late in the game here in 2023, early 2024. But you knew at that point, clearly, again, you were working an impulsive structure. So the way I would be looking at Toll Brothers here, ticker symbol TOL, and again, I kind of put in the subdivisions, uh, waves one, two, three, four, five, one, ABC, okay, flat, expanded flat correction in wave two. Notice we come back down to the prior fourth wave extreme of one lesser degree. Again, uh, uh, the rules and guidelines, again, guidelines, this is a guideline, very, very important. Then waves one, two, three, four, and five. All the rules are adhered to, all the guidelines are adhered to. 
Again, very simple structure, very simple wave count. If we wanted to get fancy and employ some of our Fibonacci multiples, let's take a look at the uh, relationship, the Fibonacci relationship between wave one and two. And you could see we pushed up a little bit above that 2.0 multiple uh, between three and wave one. Again, Fibonacci, not a, uh, it is a guideline, very useful tool. I use that all the time. But just because, again, as I was mentioning the other day, just because wave two does not come down to a 618 retracement of wave one doesn't necessarily mean uh, it's not a wave two. OK, for example, here, our wave two came down a little bit above the 618 retracement, but really centered around the 50 percent retracement of the wave one advance. But you're definitely going to have and I firmly agree with Ralph Nelson Elliott when he made this statement that the Fibonacci sequence is indeed the mathematical basis of the wave principle. I firmly believe that even at this, you know, after doing this for over 30 years, I'm more of a believer now in the efficacy of the wave principle than I ever have been. Well, that's about it for me for today. As always, thank you very, very much, and I'll see you tomorrow.